my name is Shabali Kadam, and I am so excited to be connecting with you all here and answering some of your questions. But before we get into that, I just wanted to offer a little bit of background about myself. I graduated from Oregon State University in 2018 with my Bachelor's of Science in Chemical Engineering. And since then, I have been working in the semiconductor manufacturing industry. Because of some of the experiences that I had as a woman in STEM and the barriers that I had to overcome, I am very committed to gender equity in STEM education and currently serve as the chair of the Outreach and Education Committee of the nonprofit organization Women in Science Portland. And as I'm sure some of you saw in previous stories, in June of 2019, I had the amazing, amazing honor of being selected as Miss Oregon 2019. And actually due to COVID-19, we were unable to hold a competition last year. So I was able to continue my year of service into a second year and thus becoming Miss Oregon 2020 as well. <laughs> My journey into chemical engineering was very unorthodox. So I actually started my collegiate career as an English major because in high school, I hated math. I, I hated it and I thought I was just so bad at it that I never even considered pursuing a career in STEM. It wasn't until college when I started questioning some of those assumptions that I'd made about myself and really seeing female STEM role models for the first time that I was like, hold on, maybe, maybe this is something we want to try. As to why I chose chemical engineering, to be honest, I didn't really know which engineering discipline I wanted to pursue at the beginning, but I was really enjoying my general chemistry courses at the time. So that sort of fed into that decision. And the more research I did, the more I realized that every major industry needs chemical engineers. So I figured no matter what industry or path I wanted to choose in the end, I knew that if I was a chemical engineer, I'd probably find a place for myself there. My advice to prospective chemical engineering students would be to understand that failure is a part of the process and to ask for help as soon as you need it. I actually failed my first calculus course in college, <laughs> Math 251, which for those of you who know what an engineering curriculum entails, there's at least four or five terms of calculus and a lot of higher level courses that build on top of those concepts. So to fail Math 251 right off the bat, I was like, oh man, this is not good. <laughs> One of my favorite quotes is by F. Scott Fitzgerald, and it goes, never confuse a single defeat with a final defeat. And I think that not only perfectly sums up that experience that I had early on in my education, but it's really the mentality that I hope students adopt in pursuing STEM education in general, because the problems that we are trying to solve, the assignments that we're given, they're not meant to be easy. They're just not, the, you know, the, if, if these problems were easy, they would have already been solved. So understanding that failure is an integral part of the process. And really the important part is how you learn from those failures and what you do with that knowledge moving forward. If I weren't a chemical engineer, I'd probably be a writer or a journalist. I've always loved writing. Like I said before, I had planned on majoring in English. So yeah, I think that's probably what I would have done with my career. I still love writing. It's definitely more of a hobby now, um, but I love talking about that because I think a lot of people have stereotypes about engineers, like, oh, they're only good at, they're only good at math and science and they're not good at communication or like all these other things. When in reality, for those of you who are chemical engineers or know chemical engineers, you know that couldn't be further from the truth, that we are actually very complex individuals with diverse hobbies and interests. So it's always fun to talk about um, the ways in which we kind of defy those stereotypes. What has been the best part of being a woman in STEM? I have two answers. So the first would be 
the other women that I've been able to meet through this experience. Like I said before, I am a part of a nonprofit organization called Women in Science Portland. And the women in that organization are just so incredible, like truly incredible. I think because of, you know, the gender based barriers that women face going into STEM and specifically engineering, you have to have a little bit of tenacity, <laughs> um, a little bit of um, a lot of grit and I, those are the women that I get to encounter all the time because of this path that I've chosen. And I, I love that so much. I love the relationships that I've built and the friendships that I can now depend on. And I think the my second answer would be that it's just fun to do things that people don't think you can do. And I've always loved just, I guess, defying the norms. And it's it's been a really fulfilling experience to know that I'm doing something that I think most people would agree is pretty challenging, but has been, you know, historically so hard for women to get into. And as I progress through my career, there have been more and more opportunities for me to serve as a mentor for, you know, the next generation of female engineers, which is really, really exciting and fulfilling for me because you know, one of my goals, one of my personal goals is to make sure that any door that I open for myself, that I'm doing everything I can to make sure it stays open for everyone behind me. So that's kind of the motivation behind all of the outreach work that I do and why I think it is so important to talk about these issues because I just want to, you know, make sure that it is easier for women in the future to do what I am doing today. I would not be where I am in life if it weren't for the unwavering support of my parents um, and a little bit of their tough love when, <laughs> when it was needed and very appropriate to have. And I hope that, you know, it's my wish that every child has that sort of support system. Maybe it's not through a, you know, parents or guardians, maybe it's through um, organizations like Women in Science Portland, maybe it's through a sorority or, you know, what, what have you. It doesn't really matter what form it takes, but we know through research that one of the biggest indicators of whether specifically women um, are going to stay in their pursuit of a STEM career is if they have that support system. So doing whatever we can to ensure that these kids have that from the earliest of ages is what's going to ultimately lead to the most success. Will I be continuing my career as a chemical engineer having won Miss Oregon? So for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Miss America organization, Miss Oregon is kind of a one-year deal. I am the rare, unprecedented circumstance where it has been a two-year deal. Um, but basically, you get a year to serve your state. You get to compete at Miss America. And that's, that's the end of that opportunity. It also comes with a very sizable scholarship opportunity um, and a lot of other things, but it is definitely not a career necessarily. Um, it's just an opportunity to really engage in a lot of personal growth and professional development in addition to being a really fantastic scholarship opportunity as well. So I am very much staying a chemical engineer. Um, however, I... I am grateful to the Miss America organization for giving me so much in the way of scholarship so that I can pursue further education down the line. And that's a wrap. <laughs> Thank you all so much for taking the time to get to know me better. And I hope you all have a fantastic day. Bye now.